What's up, G.I. Joe fans? Welcome back to the MIB Master Museum. I'll be your curator today. And guys, we got a fun, fun, fun G.I. Joe for you today. It's from the Timeless Collection. It's from 2001. It's our G.I. Joe Green Beret Machine Gun Outpost Set. This this was a figure set, um, play set that came out in the mid-1960s and Hasbro remade it through the Timeless Collection series in 2001. And they made it, they replicated it perfectly. This is almost the exact same set that came out in the mid-1960s. And just a phenomenal, this is one of my favorite Timeless Collection G.I. Joes that I have in my, uh, in my collection here at the museum. I am not a child of the 60s. I am a child of the 70s. So I missed out on these awesome, awesome figures that G.I. Joe uh, brought out. Well, pretty much introduced to the world. And this set is extremely desirable. It's a fun set. And what a lot of people didn't realize, the people that played with this set, or had this set actually when they were kids, this bazooka is spring-loaded activated. It actually shoots. So that, that was not a new concept uh, to the weaponry that we saw from our Hall, Hall of Fame figures and a lot of the, the newer figures. Uh, that was not a, a new concept. That concept had, had you know was already being um, used by Hasbro. Uh, a lot of people ask me, MIB, how come you don't have the vintage G.I. Joe's and I tell them because this is a C10 uh, quality right here this is museum quality everything about this box is C10 figure the box everything and it's been in our collection uh, museum collection since 2001 if I can't get this guy from 1966 the exact play set from 1966 to look just like this I can't do it guys <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry I, I can't do it uh, I've seen him loose uh, if you bind this guy loose the Green Beret machine gun outpost set the, this his figure this figure and the equipment loose will it would run you anywhere from five to a thousand dollars five hundred to a thousand dollars it's it's that expensive uh if not more if not more it depends on the condition of the figure it depends on a lot of things the condition of the um the accessories everything a lot of stuff has you know plays a part and we'll get into some of his accessories because they're they're really cool but um Sears would release these figures back in the 60s. Sears Roebuck would release these figures and they had a deal with uh, with Hasbro and they carried a lot of uh, exclusives way back when. And this was one of their exclusives. They have they have more and we have a lot of those those particular timeless collection sets in our in our museum as well and we'll we'll be doing reviews on those guys but i wanted to give my green beret uh some love I, i've i've always loved the green berets and just everything about them and this guy is just beautifully done just a awesome awesome figure here's his bag there with netting and 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 just different leaves and branches and things of that nature. 
for camouflage purposes. Let's go up top real quick and give you a... Here's the equipment list. Guys, this set is special in a couple ways because it's it's a remake from the 1960s version of the uh, Green Beret machine gun outpost set but they added Hasbro added a little twist a lot of the weapons that you're looking at are made out of die cast metal so this is a this is a heavy I'm, I'm lifting this but this is heavy it's got some weight to it die cast metal and yes, his M16 machine gun is die cast metal. Painted beautifully. Let's let's turn this box around. Turn to the side here. Here's this the side of the box here. Just showing you great pictures of some of the accessories there. Uh, the box art was done beautifully. Everything about this box was um, remade, replicated to the actual box. And we'll give you a blown out shot here of the box. Beautifully done. And here's the picture of the machine gun outpost set green beret his this is his setup the actual gi joe club uh tag that they put they will put on the the boxes the uh gi joe boxes in the back and back in the day hey buddy join the gi joe club <laughs> It just it, it's just it's like stepping back in time it's so cool it's green beret yep this is figures and accessories reminiscent of the golden age of gi joe from 1964 to 1978 here's the backstory on the green berets Beautifully done. Got our disclaimers there. Here's our year. Yep, at 2001. Just be beautifully done. Guys, this is why I can't bring myself to open the boxes and i know i've, I've had uh several uh several subscribers ask me why won't you open the boxes open the boxes <laughs> guys i can't i i i i wish i could make some of you guys truly truly understand where I'm coming from, uh, why I do what I do. And I know a lot of you guys understand it, but for, for some subscribers and some viewers, um, simply don't understand it uh, and probably will never understand how on earth can you be surrounded by hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of action figures that are encased inside their boxes and on their cards and not want or have the desire or the temptation to open them that's it, it, and listen it's a great question it's a it's a debatable question you know tell me what you think about that am i crazy uh have i taken this too far have i gone too far by not opening these guys Let's let, let's get the chatter started on that, guys. I'm open to all questions. Uh, you can ask me anything you want 
along those lines, um, why I do what I do and how come I won't open a box? Leave it in the comment section, definitely, right underneath this video. I would love, guys, I, I, I welcome the questions. I have no problem. That's been a question that's been asked of me for the last 25 years. Uh, you know, how on earth can you... There was a, um, there was a guy that did a, uh, an article on me. Uh, it's called the, uh, the, 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 the Joe Report. And this is from 2012. He did a, uh, an article on me. And the, the, the heading of the article read, To open or not to open. And the article was based on me. Um, and talking about my collection. And basically how others felt about, you know, not opening up their Joes or, or, or their action figures and how did people feel about that? And it, and it was, it was a, a well, uh, uh, um, well done article. It's really cool. And, uh, and I definitely appreciate the guy that did it. And, uh, I, I spoke to him earlier, uh, probably about two or three weeks ago about that. And, um, and I, you know, I read it and I, uh, I, I read some of the comments from people, you know, that were make, you know, you know, had their, their say on it, their opinion on it. And, uh, it's, it's one of those deals. It is one of those deals. But the best way I can tell you guys is I'm looking at this figure, my green beret figure right now, GI Joe right now, this figure. This box, these items, everything is from 2001. That's about 16 years ago by my estimation. We have kids that are, that weren't, were probably just being born around that time now that are probably 16 or 17 years old and have never seen this figure. But to see this figure in this condition just like this is a piece of history and that's all we're trying to do here at MIB Master Museum we're trying to preserve uh, the history of G.I. Joe the history of uh, Migo and have the bridge that gap bridged between that time period when these guys were being made and produced up until now and 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 into the future where people can look back at this this box figure right here 30 years from now and say wow that that's how they did that that's that's what they were selling at that particular time for action figures and that's what we're doing the preservation of GI Joe the historical preservation of G.I. Joe. And that's what my museum is all about. And uh, tell me what you think about that, guys. Tell me what you think about this figure. Did you have this figure for, for the guys that, that, that were born in the 60s? Did you guys actually have this figure? Or born born in the late 50s, I should say. I would like to hear it. Guys, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel. And we definitely appreciate the love and support we're getting from all of our, our new and old subscribers. New subscribers, welcome to the family. This is how we do things over here, guys. We debate... We get the chatter started, we share, uh, and, and most importantly, the, the, the key word is share. We all share the passion and love for this hobby. And that's why we have so many awesome collectors uh, doing this on YouTube right now. Sharing, I mean, because some of these things, some of these, these priceless uh, artifacts, if you will, would never be seen by young people 
if it weren't for uh, really cool collectors. And I'll throw out, uh, I'm going to do a random shout out uh, to uh, John Wild. John Wild, brother, your channel is amazing. It's simply awesome. And I sat there and watched video after video after video after video after video and was blown away. You took me back to the 1970s, the 80s. Man, it was it was the ride was so cool, man. And and uh, brother, I I I, pre I appreciate everything you do and you know, I I'm just hey, I'm proud to say I know you. It's really cool what you're doing over there, man, with with your channel. A phenomenal job. And with that being said, guys, you know the drill. You know the drill, but you're going to make me say it anyway. <laughs> so be it. God bless. And keep collecting.